Hi, I'm Justin Sears, a Product Marketing Manager at Hortonworks. In October 2013, the Apache Software Foundation made Hadoop 2 generally available. A few days after that, we launched Hortonworks Data Platform version 2.0. Part of that was HBase 96, and today we'll take a brief product tour through HBase 96. We'll start with what is HBase, then we'll move into new improvements in HBase version 96, and finally, we'll take a look ahead and talk about the roadmap for HBase. I'm glad to be here with Devraj Das, one of the original architects on Apache Hadoop. In 2005, Devraj was on the team at Yahoo that did some of the early work on MapReduce and HDFS. Devraj is also a co-founder of Hortonworks, and he's on the project management committee for Apache Hadoop and Apache Ambari. And then, of course, uh, Devraj is a committer on Apache HBase as well as Apache Tace. Great to have you here today, Devraj. Thanks for having me here, Justin. I'm also joined by Carter Shanklin, who's a project manager at Hortonworks. Carter's responsible for a, a data movement and services. So that includes, uh, of course, Apache HBase, as well as Apache Hive and Stinger, and Apache Tez, Apache Flume, and Apache Scoop. Great to have you here today, Carter. Thanks, Justin. Great to be here. HBase is the database for Hadoop. It, it's uh, an implementation of Google's Big Table, and it allows people to store and process a large amount of data in Hadoop in a near real-time way. So you can also think of it essentially as a NoSQL store or a key value store that sits mm. on top of, it, uh, of Hadoop. And so how are enterprises using HBase today? I, I really see that the uh, use cases for HBase, at least in my experience, break down along two lines. Uh, number one of those is when people have a lot of you know, machine-generated data or automatically generated data, people like to feed that into HBase and, and process it there because it can deal with terabytes or petabytes of data pretty easily. Mm. Another use case that I see a lot of is you know, blob storage type of use cases where you know, people want to people be able to read data, you know, large amounts of data. They want to be able to read it very quickly. So those use cases would be something like uh, user profiles or files that they want to serve. Uh, I would say those are kind of the two main use cases that I see. Devra, so how is HBase architected to meet those use cases? HBase is built on top of HDFS. Okay, uh, HDFS is Hadoop's distributed file system. So that's where HBase comes in. Okay, it provides you, uh, you know, very fast reads and updates into table data. Okay, and the tables are huge tables. We are talking about billions of rows and millions of columns. Okay. Mm. And so that's why companies like eBay, large web companies, are heavy users of HBase, right? Right, yes. Carter, I know uh, mean time to recovery was a, is a big deal in HBase 96. Let's start with that. What is MTTR? Yeah, so in, in HBase, basically, uh, the way HBase will manage data is it will split uh, responsibility for managing individual pieces of data across many different nodes. Now, uh, w if one of those nodes were to die, you temporarily will lose access to that data. And so that's been a big challenge for people. If you're running your website and you're, you're powering that with HBase, you know you can't really accept downtime. It's, it's mm -hmm. not something that people can deal with these days. So there's been a big push in HBase, a very big push in HBase 96, to reduce the amount of time that it I is required to recover a node when it fails. So a lot of work went in, a lot of improvement went in, and uh, the results were actually quite, quite dramatically good. So we did some testing with eBay, for example. You know, eBay uh, powers their search engine actually with HBase, and it's a it's a very large data set, critical to their business. It needs to be up uh, continuously available all the time. And in the testing that they did, they found that uh, previous versions of HBase, whereas a recovery would take several minutes, uh, with HBase 96 in the in the improvements to MTTR that were that were done there, they're able to get recovery times down as little as 15 seconds in some cases. So that's a big boost in HBase 96, and it will continue so to be. So minutes to 15 seconds. Minutes to seconds, absolutely. You know, this is something that we would continue to continuously work on in the future, and uh, we would run these kinds of tests over and over again, as, right. as and when we see fit. So MTTR was a, was a big win for HBase 96, but I know that there were more than 2,000 JIRA tickets closed just to deliver 96, so it wasn't all MTTR. And I know that, uh, Carter, I know that HBase now runs on Windows. That's, that's a big change, right? That's uh, that's actually new, yes. Uh, so uh, Horton, uh, Hortonworks, we did a lot of the work to port uh, HBase over to Windows, and so now, regardless of whether you are a Linux shop or you're a Windows shop, you're able to use HBase and, and manage these large amounts of data. And what about snapshots? I know there's some improvement there also. 
Yeah, quite a lot actually. So uh, a lot of the snapshot development was driven by some of some engineers at Salesforce, and uh, it was developed kind of to you know the needs that they were seeing as they move more and more data into HBase. They need to keep that data safe, secure, backed up, and snapshots enable you to do that. So in HBase, snapshots allow you to take a, a, essentially an instantaneous point in time view of the data. You can take that data, you can back it up to another cluster, you can uh, revert to that point in time if you decide you need to go back. We have done a significant amount of work uh, to improve the compaction's behavior in HBase 96, right? So compaction is required to be able to efficiently serve the data, okay? So you have all these files on the HDFS uh, that you know HBase serves data out of, and at some points of time, we, you need to compact them so that there are not too many files for the HBase data, okay? Because what happens if you didn't do the compaction? Then your reads, reads performance will suffer. Mm. The, you know, the, the users will see higher latencies for the queries that they make onto HBase. So the compaction helps performance? Yes, exactly. So if I am an HBase user and I come in to work every day and I use HBase, give me a sense of the before and after there with compactions now. How is my life different or better now that there are compaction improvements? So as a as a user, you probably won't see that much of a di that much of a difference. But in the cluster, you have much less I/O going on, for example, in many use cases. So does okay. that mean that the cluster runs more efficiently, or getting more utilization yes. out of the existing exactly. cluster? Yes. Okay, that's yes. great. Yes. And Carter, what else is new in ninety six? So another big uh, feature that people like and is very popular is uh, ninety six introduces first class data types. And so when people approach databases, they tend to expect these kind of things that uh, they're going to have your data types that they can take advantage of that are natively supported within the, da uh, the database. Uh, HBase didn't have such a notion actually before 96. There was a need really to introduce first class data types. So a number of data types have been added to represent numbers, to represent strings, uh, arrays, and other things that are very important for developers. Overall, developing to HBase 96 is a lot more productive and a lot more effective than it was in prior HBase versions. And Devraj, what about the wire compatibility change in 96? Yes, um, so with HBS 96, as a community, we decided that we should be compatible with the pre, you know the versions of HBS that come after 96. So as part of 96, we're trying to solve this problem, uh, which means that uh, if you have a cluster and you have a bunch of applications that are accessing the cluster, um, and if you, let's say, you upgrade to 96.2, uh, for example, right, uh, your applications you know, wouldn't see any downtime, okay? And we are trying to see, make sure that even for major upgrades, this holds true. So maybe 96 to 98, for example, would still work. So the cl users of uh, the cluster would not need to take down their applications. It would all seamlessly work. So talking about upgrades, let's move to the roadmap now. And Carter, what's coming up in HBase in the months to come? A lot of people are very excited about a thing called Phoenix, which is a SQL layer on top of HBase that allows you to, to develop to HBase using a very familiar SQL language. And this was introduced in HBase 94, so it's, it's out there for people who want to use HBase 94. Not supported yet on HBase 96, but it will be soon. Uh, Hortonworks is really helping to, to move that along and help port that uh, Phoenix layer to HBase 96. Phoenix allows people to very uh, rapidly and very fluently develop applications or develop dashboards and really opens HBase up to an audience of people who may not have experienced it otherwise. Where do you see the trajectory over a longer time horizon? We're thinking of supporting transactions in the future. So today we have uh, you know, per row transactions in HBase, but then we want to support things like uh, you know, per across the region transactions. We want to support across table transactions, maybe across data center, but that's far into the future. Uh, that's one thing that we are uh, looking at. We are looking at uh, support for modern hardware. So things like you have, uh, you know, today you have machines uh, with SSDs, right? You have machines with 128 gigs of RAM. So how do we make the best e best use of those hardware? And we are also looking at uh, better MTTR. So MTTR is a topic that we'll will you know we'll continue to pound on. So towards that, we are looking at you know um, high availability of region servers, wherein uh, you don't have any downtime at all. These all sound like great ideas. I'm sure the open community is really excited about working on these as well. Yes. How many engineers are involved across how many companies right now? Um, so I would say so we have uh, around 25 developers uh, across five companies kind of a situation at this point. Uh, and the community is growing. Well, I've had a great time talking with you both, Devraj. Thanks for joining today. Thanks for having me, Justin. And Carter, thanks for spending some time and braving the rain to get here and talk about HBase. Thanks, Justin.
and thank you for joining this brief product tour about HBase 96. If you're excited about those changes that are upcoming, please visit us on our website. We have an Apache HBase page on Hortonworks.com. And we will also be blogging about all the changes that Carter and Devaraj mentioned today. And then, of course, follow us on Twitter, because then you'll get minute-to-minute -minute updates anytime there's a post to our blog about the changes in HBase. Thank you very much for joining us today.